Well, a very good evening to you. Good afternoon. Good morning, depending on where you are watching us from. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Osuansa, and you are warmly welcome to the Power Impact Series show, proudly brought to you by the African Season Speakers Network, where we influence the next generation of young people all over the world. And say, it's a wonderful place to be. And you know, we bring people from all around the world to come and be a source of inspiration and a sort of motivation to young people of this generation so if you are here now you are welcome but before we do that you know what we always do get into the chat area let me know who is online with me or share the link to people let others also come in and come and join us to receive from the wisdom nuggets that are going to be shared today with us because on this today is a wonderful person who is going to digest some very important topics with us so hey 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 if you are here if you are ready you know what you're going to do share the link let others also join us and you know where we keep on moving from strength to strength so get into the chat area let me know who is online with me let me know where you are joining me from let me feel the energy in the house let me feel the vibe so we can move on but yeah we'll take our first break and right after the break i'm going to do the introduction of our guest for today so don't go anywhere share the link let others also join but right after this first break i'll be doing the introduction of our guests for today. So stick around, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Influencing the next generation of Africans, that's what we stand here for and what we stand for to gain. So, hey, welcome to the Power Impact Series show. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Oswan. It is always a pleasure to have you here. And today on the show, we're going to have a wonderful person joining us, and we are going to have somebody. I mean, that you will want to listen to over and over and over and over again because, hey, 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 I'm so glad to have this wonderful person with us in our studio. So without much ado, I'll go straight away and do the introduction. But yeah, 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 yeah. Have you shared the link? Have you invited someone? Because we don't want to get it all alone. We need to also let others also join us for this wonderful discussion. So please, please, please share the link and let others also join right so if you have shared the link or if you're about to share it you can share it whilst i introduce our guest for today so our guest for today is a wonderful person that uh, i said earlier on you love to listen to over and over and over again our guest for today's show is a ceo and managing partner with v5 solution and evan global consult guest this year so ladies and gentlemen help me welcome for the very first time onto the power impact series platform no other person than dr victor abe let's give him a round of applause you know it you know how we do it let's show him some love let's show him some love yeah yeah let's say Good evening to you, Doctor Abe. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm fine, Ambassador, Ambassador Benjamin. I'm fine. I hope you are fine too. And good evening ah. to all the audience out there. I am doing so well. I'm happy to have you here. So I'm extremely happy. Yeah, to have the doctor in the yeah. house this evening. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be here as well. Right, right. We love, we love the Ghana flag that you're flying behind you. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> for country, for country and God. Every right, for country we and God. We, we need to right, hold right. the flag high. That is our Yeah, country. we need to hold the flag. We need to exactly. hold the flag high. <laughs> exactly. So how, how have you been, Abide? Let's start it this way. How has the year been to you? We are almost uh, clocking to the 10th month of the year 2023. How has the year been for you? Uh, well, um, well, first of all, first of all, we thank God for our life, uh, January to September. It's been amazing. Uh, amidst all the challenges, God has been faithful, and we are right. we, we keep on keeping on. And right. what can we say? But to say thank God for counting us among the living, and right. we we'll continue to play our role. So uh, that's good. <laughs> we will continue to play our role that is good we count it all joy when we go through diverse situations and we have been able to move from january and we are about entering into where october so it's all joy and we thank god for how far he has brought us so yes that's from dr abe for you so yes 
you that you hear that you're joining us let me hear you let me feel you get to the chat area and let me know where you're joining us from and you see we're going to have a wonderful time this evening this afternoon this morning depending on where you are watching us from and but for us we come into you all the way from accra ghana west africa right so dr abe i just gave you a little bit of description about you but hey you here i don't want to take that away from you we want to hear from you who is dr victor abe and uh, just a little bit about who you are then we can pick it from there yeah we are all uh, yes <laughs> all right um dr abby is well to put it in a jovial way dr abby is the one you are seeing but by way of a little bit of uh detail i will say dr abby is um is a veteran military officer uh, having served in the military for uh close to 12 years and wow. voluntarily re retired and gone to play or pay my due in the civil world as well so for the past 11 years or so, I've been in the civil world and uh, trying to make the impact that we all need. And right. I have passion for leadership, change management, and risk management in general. Because one of the key things that drive my actions on daily basis is the fact that when we get leadership rights, everything will be in place, will be in the right place. So that is Dr. Abe passionate about leadership, passionate about uh, transformation as in change management. We need to change because change is the only constant thing in life. And so that's, that's, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's him. That's him. I mean, he has passion for leadership. He has passion for leadership. So before we even move into, I mean, the discussion, I mean, before we get for you to start your presentation, one who asks, I mean, uh, I, I, I lead this uh, leadership made for certain kind of people that others don't have that kind of quality. So we have some people that we tag them as, yeah, these are leaders, but for these ones, they are followers. Do we have something like that? Do we have anything like that? Personally, I, I don't believe in that. I believe that even if you are a follower, you are a leader at a point in time. So everybody right. has the capability to be a leader. Uh, how you harness your potential, your God-given talent, mm -hmm. how you learn, how you, mm -hmm. you know, tap into other people's experiences will equip you with the right skills to be able to lead effectively. Uh, talk about the fact that nobody has been born to be in charge of people. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. um, there is um, an argument that some are born with certain traits yeah, that automatically place them you know over others but i believe that right. every single person is a leader wherever you find yourself you're a leader so you need to tap into your space tap into other people's spaces to equip yourself with the right skills to be able to lead and lead effectively yeah right so wherever you find yourself tap into your leadership skills and then you will lead effectively beautiful thank you so much thank you so much if you're joining us yes you are yes, live you and you're quick. welcome just to be quick uh ambassador to add that you see right. when the leader is not there whoever you consider the leader when he's not there you are a follower doesn't mean you become <laughs> stuck <laughs> where you are <laughs> you you <laughs> you will be required to move on so you need to understand that leadership is for everybody <laughs> leadership is for everyone so when the leader is not there and you are the follower what are you or what do you become do you still wait for that leader who is no longer there? What happens next? I mean, that's the question we are having here. What happens next? You are a follower. The leader is no longer around. Who do you become? That's that's a huge question. <laughs> that is a huge question, Dr. Abi. That is a serious question that has been posed for us there. That once the leader is no longer around, and you who call yourself or see yourself as a follower, what do you become? first that's our question number one for the day right so thank you so much if you're joining us you are live on the power impact series show where you are with the ambassador benjamin also and sat together with dr victor abbe where we're going to have um a wonderful discussion today so please if you are joining us yes we want to say welcome and thank you for joining us on the power impact series show 
yes 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 um our guest just gave a little brief about uh himself he, sh he shared certain things about himself and then we are about to dive into our topic for today but before that let me give some shout out to those that have joined us here uh let me just give some shout out to those that have joined us i have Marquesia who says yes i am joining you all the way from Mam Provi Dance my thank you so much Marquesia for joining us if any other person is also on the call let us know where you are joining us from and then let's give some shout outs to Dr Victor Abbey so without much we do we're going straight on to our topic for today and this is our topic for today effective leadership and teamwork across diverse generation i'm going to hand over the platform straight away to dr victor abe to take us through the presentation and then we are going to be here and uh we'll make our questions ready when it is time for questions so over to you dr abe <laughs> All right, Ambassador Benjamin, thanks for the opportunity once again, and um, good evening to our audience and viewers out there. It's been um, an amazing week and weekend, Sunday, very inspiring Sunday, so to speak. And um, I am humble to be here. Um, and I believe that leadership is everything. It is said that leadership, everything rises and falls on leadership. That's uh, uh, John Maxwell says so, and it is, generally the case and today's topic effective leadership and teamwork across diverse generations speaks to the fact that there are uh, things that we know we 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 know there are other things that we we know we don't know there are others we we don't know that we know and there are others we don't even know that we don't know so right. that is ascribed to the former Defense Secretary of the U.S. Donald Rumsfeld, who said that there are things, there are known knowns, and there are known unknowns. There are yeah. unknown knowns, and there are unknown unknowns. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. But <laughs> what it means is that in life you may be charting a course. You may think you know it all, but if you take your time to watch closely, you realize that there are some things that you will not be capable of doing mm -hmm. so as a leader you need to appreciate the fact that there are other people within your team who require uh, some inputs or whom you require some input from and so you mm -hmm. have to understand all these things and so that is wow. one of the reasons why i get excited or oh, i was excited when uh, the invitation was extended to me i think you are doing a wonderful job so maybe we can just proceed straight up with the presentation. So by way of introduction, uh, what I said earlier by uh, the known knowns and all that uh, is basically about, we call it the concept of knowability. In the general okay. world, the general global space, that is the reality of right. knowledge. You will not right. know some things and some things you will not even know that you know those things. So right. again, uh, if we are to continue, I will say that all of us at any point in time we aspire to provide a kind of uh, positive influence to our space everywhere we find ourselves i don't think anybody sets out to you know impact negatively on people except maybe you intentionally want to you know focus on parochial interest but the largely or by and large all leaders set out to have positive influence on people but sometimes right. circumstances you know compel or um they don't permit them to achieve whatever they want to achieve. So what it means is that for us to achieve our goals, we need to continuously understand the people we are working with, the team we have, what are the capabilities within the team, and what can we do to get everybody on board. That is why you must pay attention to what is called effective leadership and teamwork. Leader cannot do it all. And leadership is not by one person it is without a team there's no leader or without people there's no leader probably you can only be a leader over your own self so ambassador you see for for most teams the question of diversity um becomes or are lost to a lot of people 
we all think that once we are together, that is all about it. But diversity is something that we we must recognize as, you know, a key enabler of success in terms of leadership. So I will say, first of all, let's try to understand what the whole presentation is going to be about. I'll focus basically on, let's have a basic understanding or let's establish what leadership means by my own definition and what I consider as universal definition of leadership. And then we, what about teamwork and what is the nature of the current environment we find ourselves in? Because at any point in time, the things that are happening around us affect the kind of leadership that is required or the kind of right. support that the team members require to give or are required to give to the leader. So we need to understand the, the, the nature of the current world we find ourselves in. And then we move on quickly to, to look at what are those critical leadership and team management skills that leaders require within the kind of environment we find ourselves in today. Then I'll crown it by concluding and then questions and clarifications can be sought from there. So that's by way of scope. So let's go on to the, the slides. Um, the, after the scope, let's go on to the first slide on fundamentals of leadership. Now, leadership basically has to do with providing that kind of continuous guidance. Um, let's move on to the slide so that the viewers can look at the, the particular slide. Um, it's on fundamentals of leadership. Uh, please scroll in. Uh -huh. So after this one. So basically, the next one. So it's about providing that light or a bridge for a smooth passage of the team towards the attainment of a goal, a shared goal. Because every team has commonality in terms of what they want to achieve. What is the team set out to achieve is not for the leader, it's for the entire team. So the leader ensures that he or she provides that bridge on which the team can navigate towards the shared goal, attainment of the goal. And so leadership for me is a continuous process of providing direction, purpose, inspiration, motivation towards the attainment of the, the shared goal. It is not about position. It is not a title. It is not about personality. It is about that process that, that enables one person or a group of people to identify their shared need and then one or two will provide that direction that inspiration because along the path there will be challenges and that is where inspiration motivation and purpose focus becomes very critical so leadership is about that leadership is not the title it is not about, oh, um, our director, or our managing director, our CEO. No, it's not about that. At any point in time, the CEO may have to be a team member for somebody else to play a critical role, a leading role in, you know, paving way towards the attainment. So when we talk about leadership, universally, we must come to terms or with a universal definition that it is not a title. It is not a position. It is about capability to embark on that process of providing direction, purpose, you know, and inspiration to people. Now, when we move on from there, then we want to look at the fact that the leader, by, before you can empower, you can provide that direction and motivate people, you must enable them to do what they are supposed to do by empowering them, by, you know, leading them to you know, navigate around changes or challenges that come their way and also provide, you know, a, a compelling reason to believe in the shared goal or the shared vision. Because if the leader is not able to market the vision or the goal to the team, you see that along the line, members will begin to lose hope. They will, be lo they will lose focus because they, they will feel that the direction we are going or the end state is not going to work for us or in our interest so they may backtrack and that is the reason why a leader must keep focus must focus keep the eye on the ball or the eyes on the ball at all times to monitor the space to understand whatever is happening so leadership fundamentally leadership must provide that direction it must empower people it must give them sense of you know fulfillment or sense a hope 
sense of hope that indeed one day we're going to get there from the way we are going, from the way our, our, our leader provides a convincing argument or, uh, you know, direction for us, we will get there one day. So that is a leader's role to play, and we must understand that. So slide, go on to the next slide. Now, that's what I just spoke about. But in addition to that, leadership requires a certain mindset for you to provide direction, empower people, to inspire them towards a shared goal attainment, you must have a certain mindset. What we call the fixed and the growth mindset. If you, you want to go for fixed mindsets, that's the next slide. Please go on to the next slide. A fixed mindset is, for me, a no-go area. Because if you go for a fixed mindset, it means that you are so fixated in whatever comes your way. You don't see other ways of doing things. You are so static. You are so regimented in your approach. You are so, you know, naive in the sense that you see everything to be, okay, it happens because it has to happen. But if you have a growth mindset, you're able to, you know, view challenges as opportunities. The challenges that will come the way of the team, the leader will be able to view it as, look, we have an opportunity embedded in this. Let's give an example. When COVID-19 struck and the whole world locked down, I mean, initial reaction across the globe was, whoa, it's going to crash the whole, I mean, the global economy. And Africa, for example, was going to be, you know, a space for disaster. But Quickly, leaders across the globe has to, with a growth mindset, has to quickly get to, to, to the working you know, space to appreciate that. Look, there are opportunities em embedded in there. Global technological giants saw opportunity in there. Technology became handy. And before we could say Jack, technology became the, 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 the foundation, the foundation for everything. People thought we were going to stay at home. But the opportunity was presented by technology and leaders had to jump on board and embrace technology and work went on smoothly. Right. So it is the growth mindset that enables leaders to do that. So what I say is that if you are a leader, fundamentally, you must believe in growth mindset. It must be wow. your baby, everyday baby. You cannot manage a team if you have a fixed mindset. You will not progress and you will not see progress within your team. Now let's go on to the, the, the next slide. If leadership fundamentally is all about, you know, inspiring, what do we mean by team and teamwork? Teamwork, we talk about, so we have our, our topic has effective leadership and teamwork. So looking yeah. at teamwork is a compound word, team and work. So team you can talk about basically as assembly of people constituted to 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 run something or to do something to solve a problem to invent a product or to streamline a process i mean to improve services you can talk about a lot more right. now what it means is that the team has members and members come with their own capabilities and sure. each member has unique capabilities this is where we're going to hammer on when we go to the, the various generations or diversity within the team so leaders must appreciate that we come from different backgrounds cultural right. you know uh, orientations different cultural orientations and so we are likely to do things differently so the leader's job is to identify those differences and harness them and harmonize them towards the shared goal, the attainment, so that people can work and build that symbiotic mm -hmm. relationship among themselves mm -hmm. towards attainment of a shared goal. So when we talk about team, let's take note of the characteristics of a team. Assembly of people constituted to solve a problem, create something or streamline something with each person having unique capabilities or qualities. Now, let's go on to the work. Obviously we know work is, let's go to the next slide. So work is about activity, which requires effort and commitment anyway. And teamwork, when we combine it, therefore, it means that a group of people who are to combine their efforts, regardless of wherever they are coming from, with different capabilities, combine efforts 
to attain something is what we refer to as teamwork. It is wow. not individual activities. Individual activities will be conducted, but in harmony with other people's activities. So that is why it becomes a combined effort towards, you know, attainment of, you know, a, a, a task or a goal or whatever you call it. So teamwork is what makes the work happen. It is not individualism that make it happen. So having talked about this, let's move on to talk about the fact that the next slide talks about the fact that it requires cooperation. You cannot work in silos and say you are you are working as a team. No, teams must, must you know a team must cooperate or team members must cooperate with each other, and leadership becomes the the, the central enabler because leaders identify people within the team with different capabilities and streamline how each member operates in a way that will you know support or complement the effort of others towards the attainment of the goal so leaders play a role so leadership and teamwork act in tandem in every sphere of life you cannot be a leader and work through individuals without paying attention to the, the individuals working together. If you, you are selective in your approach to leading people, it's likely to backfire. So that is why leadership must pay attention to teamwork. But of course, it, it is not all about paying attention, but what is it that we require to do? That's what we're going to look at next. So, but before we go on to the, the skills that leaders will require to, you know, professionally and competently coordinate the affairs of team members towards the attainment of a goal, let's look at what is the current nature of our environment that we are operating in. Let's go on to the next slide. The nature of the environment we are operating defines certain behavioral traits that leaders need to acquire. The skills vary from time to time because the environment we are in, the rapidity of change around us is so enormous that you cannot base your knowledge on yesterday and want to apply it today and it will work. It may not work because times have changed. Things are changing on a daily basis. So leaders need to understand the current space we find ourselves in. So the next slide talks about the fact that across the globe, we have largely defined or largely globally, we have defined environment as VUCA, that is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Let's go on to the next slide, please. Now, that I have personally written a book about the, the VUCA world and the future of corporate strategy and leadership. That was at the time corporate um, COVID-19 was in vogue, lockdown, and it brought mm -hmm. to question the issues bordering on corporate strategy. Because traditionally, corporate strategy was approached in a certain way. But COVID-19 indicated to us that, look, that corporate strategy is thrown overboard. With just one occurrence of a pandemic, everything was thrown overboard. Budgets were thrown, volatility increased, you know, uncertainty as to what is happening next and all that. Now, where we find ourselves now, experts are talking about the fact that because the world became volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, it has given rise to, you know, unpredictable nature of our wow. environment. And anxiety has risen. Look at the, uh, the, the Russian-Ukrainian war. I mean, it's creating confusion in the minds of everybody. Look at the coup d'etats around us. <laughs> you know, so anxiety is all over the place. Where is the next meal coming from? Where is the next uh, food item coming from? And the things are occurring in a very non-linear manner. The, yeah. This one happens, the next time another one happens. That's the kind of environment we find ourselves. And they are, we cannot comprehend what is going on. While everybody was focusing on Russia and Ukrainian war, we before we could say Jack, West Africa started experiencing coup d'etats. 
all over the place and borders were closed tourism here and there and i was the old oh, ghana for example the onion imports from niger has now gotten to a point where you know it's not coming because the borders are closed all those people in business what happens those in the onion business what happens so the things are incomprehensible so what i want to say is that the kind of world we find ourselves in is so you know um complex and ambiguous and so incomprehensible so leaders must bear in mind that in fact this is going to stay with us for a long time to come because if you look at the geopolitical space across you know uh, the, the 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 global space you realize that one thing happens somewhere it affects everybody now even there are talks about the fact that we are moving away from globalization to deglobalization because countries are beginning to look inwards to say what can we do to save ourselves from uh, another person's misbehavior so if a leader somewhere misbehaves that we depend on we need to protect ourselves domestically okay. and so global deglobalization is setting in and these are things that leaders need to pay attention to so let's move on in the space in the midst of all this we must have leaders anyway somebody must provide direction and somebody right. must must provide guidance somebody must provide purpose somebody must provide motivation somebody must provide you know vision somebody must read in between the lines and say that hey as a team let's do a b c d and we're going to survive constantly monitoring the space so people may have doubts people may have their own reservations but it is the leader's business within this whole space that we find ourselves to provide that direction that is why effective leadership is very very important so now let's look at another aspect of the nature of our environment we find ourselves the next slide talks about the fact that within the midst in the midst of this global confusion we have about four different generations we talk about the baby boomers generation x millennials and gen z as they are popularly called as for the younger ones who are referred to as generation alpha are also within the space now if you find yourself the next slide please to for for for, for the viewers to see okay so the generation the the baby boomers most of them between 1946 to 64, they have a certain, uh, you know, behavioral trait. Very optimistic people enjoy mentoring, they work, they have very strong work ethic. If you talk about the Gen X, 65 to 1980, they are independent minded people, innovative, strong communicators. Now, if you talk about the millennials, you know, that was the, 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 the onset of technological, you know, influence within the world and the 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 focus on the greater good the, the the focus on all you know everybody now what can we do faster to enable everybody make a gain or something like that and then gen z they are digitally very fluent and practical in their approach to doing things they flourish in diverse workforces so leaders need to pay attention to these four critical generations within the space that we are operating in without that you may lose sight of the diversity that re, you know permeates your your team or that exists within your team why it is important is that each of the generations have certain traits that impact on your leadership so leaders must pay attention at all times to this different generation the next slide is that i say the critical hallmark of an effective leader therefore in the current scheme of things and going into the future has to do with his or her capability to work alongside and across diverse generations with divergent backgrounds but not all of that but with high emotional intelligence emotional intelligence is something that will reign supreme in the situation we find ourselves in now let's move on to what then again is within the space we all know ai is is on top the pace of change is high new talent landscape the young people are very talented they are coming out with new ideas every day 
there is there's there is the need for purpose and meaning in whatever is happening globalization is 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 in within the space jacob morgan you know research that by 2030 these things are the these six major things are what will be shaping the world and so you and i as leaders for us to be effective in our effort to provide leadership must understand the kind of things the kind of world we find ourselves in, the kind of factors or what type of factors or issues that are going to affect our leadership so because it is you know an online presentation and we are operating within the, the time space i will move on quickly to talk about what then if we are talking about the volatile nature the brittle nature the anxious nature the non-linear nature of the world we find ourselves in the various generations that we have within the space that we need to we need to pay attention to and the kind of uh, trends that are shaping our world what then will be the critical leadership skills that we require to manage our teams effectively so let's move on to the next slide the next one please now in my earlier submission i mentioned emotional intelligence what is emotional intelligence or what are the key components of emotional intelligence emotional intelligence has basically to do with understanding your own emotional triggers and that of others so as to balance to create a balance to deal with all situations that come you come across so a leader must understand that you have your own emotions and other people have their emotions as well so if you are aware of your own emotions then you'll be able to empathize with other people so self-awareness is key leaders must understand their own emotions they must understand the fact that other people have emotions that they also you know that can be triggered at any point in time leader with emotional intelligence must have self-motivation in order to surmount the challenges that must come his or her way and you must develop the capability to regulate your own emotions this we call it self-control or self-regulation how are you able to contain your own emotions there are times that your team members may provoke you but a, a leader with a very strong emotional intelligence should be in a position to you know contain all those things and know how to you know respond to such provocations at any point in time because others have and then your own pro pronouncements you must know have impact on others and as much as others have uh, uh, impact on you by way of your pronouncement now your awareness of self and awareness of others will give you you know capability to have those social skills in networking in you know uh fishing out information getting feedback from your team you know and so on and so forth so it is it is very high on the agenda if you want to be an effective leader across diverse generations emotional intelligence is one of the you know four skills or the formal skills that you, one needs to embrace to be able to do that. Let's go on to the next. Um, so what are the benefits? If you have a, a strong emotional intelligence, you are able to develop meaningful relationships with people. You command respect. People are able to, you know, get closer to you. You are emotion, you become socially competent. People are able to say that oh as for our leader even when he can tell when i'm not in a good mood he can tell when i'm in my high spirit he knows when to give me what assignment he knows when to whip the, the team to order or into shape he knows when to you know praise the team you know so you earn that kind of respect and it helps you in improving your decision making it, it, it also increases the team performance because they believe in you they know that at any point in time these are the things you will not like these are the things you also will offer support for and your own personal well-being you know at all times be angry you will not become violent at any point in time you will not become aggressive you tend to be more calm and more you know respectful to other people so if you want to be an effective leader 
emotional intelligence is one of the things you you want to pay attention to now this is another one i call the half skills h-a-v-e humility adaptability visionary and engagement if you want to be an effective leader humility is one you must understand that it is by the mere fact that you happen to be the one coordinating affairs it doesn't make you superior and higher above anybody you are a member of the team first of all you are part of the team and you must play your role in a very humble manner you do not know everything you are not all knowing and when times change as i indicated earlier that we are in a very volatile complex and ambiguous world you need to learn to be adaptable to you know situations you don't need to be fixated in your way of doing things you don't need to have a fixed mindset remember i said we need to have a growth mindset where we see opportunities in all challenges so adaptability is key and you must be able to foresee the future because you are always constantly monitoring the space you'll be able to tell where you are going. And if there's a need to reshape the direction, you'll be able, you should be able to do that. These are skills you need to, to develop as an effective leader. And you must be engaged at all times. You must have, you know, connection with your team constantly. Feedback is one of the ways to engage the people. Call something 360 degree feedback enables you to receive constructive feedback from your people. Now, another thing that you need to develop is trust. And by this, there's a trust equation that I want to introduce to all of us. It is the T. So trust here is equal to credibility plus reliability plus intimacy divided by your own self-orientation or, you know, how you perceive yourself. Do you perceive yourself as a self-conceited person or all-knowing? that counts in the way people trust you on how people trust you so if you say you 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 exhibit knowledge which is right and professional you gain credibility if you say you 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 walk the talk you gain reliability and when you relate to people you engage people you are closer to your team you end the intimacy part of it and if you do all this and yet your self-orientation, your emotional intelligence, your the way you carry yourself about is not right. It will negate everything at the top that you have gained. So you need to engage. You need to listen. You need to frame your orientation well. You need to envision issues and you need to commit to the cause. And these are the five stages you can use to develop trust in people. Let's go on to the next one. Now, when you are leading people across diverse generations, you must understand that different people work differently. So you need to rethink the boring stuff. If you are generation, if you are baby boomer or you are generation X like myself and or you are a millennial or you are a Gen Z person, you must understand that different generations work in different ways. And so you rethink about the boring stuff. Somebody may not be too interested in utilizing, you know, certain processes or something. How can you utilize technology using other team members who are so good at technology to, you know, fast track certain processes for the team? It is something you can look at. You can create flexibility around the hours. You'll say everybody, you know, you have to be at work. You have to be with the team at all, but it doesn't matter. People can be elsewhere. Now technology has provided a platform for all of us. You can be everywhere and work anywhere. And you must also help the team to learn. Likewise, yourself you must understand that you, at any point in time, you, you should be a mentor, you should be a coach, and you may identify coaches within your team as well, culturally and technologically. If you're a baby boomer, for example, and you are not so good at technology, a Gen Z person can become your coach and be able to take you through. And all this thing will, will inure to your benefit in the long run as a leader and to the team because they'll see that, okay, the leader is down to earth. He doesn't indicate that he knows everything. 
and you must also give good reasons at all times when things are tough when things are going well when things are getting bad you must also provide good reasons and you must learn from each other as you know team now let's go on to something i call the um what leaders actually you know have to focus their mind on the, the, the four things that summarize the whole thing has to do with the fact that we have a, an accelerating globalization happening around us. Technology is on the high. So flexibility of mind, cultural sensitivity, agility and collaboration, good strategic thinking. You must be visionary. You must always be forward looking. And these days we are also, climate change is also one area that is you know, hitting all of us, whether we like it or not. So we talk about ESG, where we say environmental sustainability and governance. How are you taking care of the environment? How are you, you know, providing social um, uh, services to your, your team members and your communities that you're creating? What are the governance issues within the processes? Do you adhere to those processes? As a leader, do you come across as corrupt? that everything is all by you and it must be for you. These are things that you need to pay attention to. Digitization, technological space attention, and geographical or demographic changes are some of the key areas too we need to pay attention to. On that note, I will say that within our space that we find ourselves in, to be effective at leadership, we need to understand the space we are creating. We need to understand the different, the divergent generations that we have within our space. We need to understand the technological changes or the economic situations that we find ourselves in. Geopolitical and social cultural issues must come to the fore in our minds at all times when we are embarking on effective leadership across generations. Without that, we cannot do much. In all this, emotional intelligence and the half skills must reign supreme. On this note, let me be quick to just, the next slide shows the book that I, I wrote about the, the VUCA world and the, 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 the corporate strategy and leadership, the future, the future of corporate strategy and leadership. It is a book that when you grab it, you so far it's been described by a lot of people, not for me, uh, as an amazing book. I will not give you, I will not, I will say what people say, but grab a copy and you'll be you bear testimony to that. Thank you very much. And at this point, I will pause for your question, but to quickly remind ourselves that we are Africans. I am proud to be an African and I pledge to stand firm at all times. I will lead and be the change. Come, take my hand. Come, let me take your hand. For the safety, honor, and welfare of our country and companies, come first always and every time. The honor, welfare, and comfort of the people I lead must come next to my own ease comfort and safety which must come last always and every time this is an honor code that i project on my tv program called the leadership 360 on metro tv every week i believe if we all of us as leaders embrace this code our countries our continent will be an amazing place to be thank you very much ambassador benjamin for the opportunity i'll pause at this point wow i'll pause at this place the honor welfare and comfort of the people i lead come next oh my goodness <laughs> hey 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 the people in the house yeah we want to say a very big thank you to dr victor abby you have taken us on a different level this evening <laughs> on this episode my oh my I, I I really love the presentation that has been shared with us. Um, I think I, I will have to now, <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to now take a breather, just take a quick break. And when I return, I'm going to hear questions that I mean, uh, viewers have. If they have any questions, they will just 
throw it on board and then we can push it to Dr. Abeba. So don't go anywhere. Stick around. We'll be back shortly after this break. Influencing the next generation of Africans, that is all we seek to do. And that is what we do here at uh, African Season Speakers Network with its flagship program being the Power Impact Series. And definitely on this episode, power has been given to us. Right. So just a few shout outs to those that have joined us. Thank you so much. Ambassador Prince Kuju Hilton. He says, keep doing great. Thank you for joining Ambassador Prince Kuju Hilton. Thank you all so much. Uh, Ama Wichem said he's joining us from Castland. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you all that have joined us and thank you for your time. Right. So a quick one. Um, Doug, you, you spoke about uh, emotional intelligence. And then when you come, mostly when we're talking about emotional intelligence, people just attribute it straight away to is it to temperament. <laughs> and that says, you know, you, 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 if you're able to study this persons and you hit on certain buttons, yes, you're going to get this person flair or get into the arena that you want that person to get to. How do we get to get this self-awareness? How does one get to know about some of these things that are kind of um in a way like they are weak points that people can easily get to as leaders they can easily punch on those buttons or paint those areas and then they get these people kind of into the area they want them to get to how does one get to have this self-awareness so that they are able to know how to control some of these things as a leader leading people through uh, diverse ways or diverse generations all right uh thank you i think that's a very critical uh question uh it is you know it's something that i always say leaders it should be the focus of every leader because as humans we are all equipped with all <laughs> in us our emotions we are emotional beings <laughs> and so if you occupy the um, the role of leadership where you, you have to coordinate affairs of other men with emotion, you must first of all understand your own emotions and you want to know how do I get to know that. You need to constantly conduct self-introspection. Everything that you want to do or you have done, you must conduct pre and post um, you know, activity review where you need to understand how have I fared you need to be sincere with yourself. You need to be sincere with yourself in the sense that you know yourself better than any other person. It's a sincerity that will lead you to that space to say that, as for me, I know that this one, when somebody frowns at me, I get pissed or I get angry. And how do I manage that? Nobody else can do that better than yourself. So self-introspection constantly is one of the ways to do so. Another way to do it, and, and you know, when you are doing self-introspection, you need to be sincere in your answers. If, if you can deceive anybody, not yourself, you must be sincere <laughs> with your own self. And in fact, I always say, if you deceive yourself, then you are living, <laughs> and, and, I mean, a, a life not worthy of living. So you can right. only pretend to others, but to yourself, at least be sincere. And the next thing is you may want to appoint an accountability partner. Accountability partner is someone who you believe that can look straight into your face and tell you the realities of what you do, both positive and negative. And that should be a guide onto you. And accountability partners should be carefully selected because sometimes leaders tend to select people who will tell them what they want to hear no that is not about that it is about somebody you know that he says it the way it is if it's good he will tell you or she will tell you if it's bad he or she will tell you as well so these two things are things that leaders can do to understand themselves and control their own emotions as well. And the third thing I'll talk about is that for you to also build your emotions or have emotional intelligence, you must understand the teams, the, the team you are working with, the members of your okay. team. Where are the diverse backgrounds? Diversity comes with its own nuances and leaders must pay attention to individual members. What is their background? Where are they coming from? 
what are the cultural issues what are the social issues what are the personal issues within the background of the various individuals for example let me give an example somebody within the team let's say two people in a team one they are close one is married with children the other is, is is married but not with children others may not be married and the leader right. engaging this different group of people must appreciate the fact that the dynamics are different so certain comments may hit on certain nerves so leaders will be conscious about what kind of jokes they crack what kind of comments they pass and all that because it will help you to appreciate the to regulate your own emotions in a way and regulate your own actions because when you regulate your actions and inactions it will pave way for you dealing with people more effectively than just saying things anyhow so attention to the team members will help you to also shape your own emotional intelligence as well uh, we can go on and on and on but social networking is another thing when you interact with people more you get to appreciate the diversity uh, or the diverse backgrounds people emotions and all those things so thank you well, i love that point you made to yourself at least be sincere <laughs> Exactly. to yourself at least yourself. be sincere <laughs> right yeah. so uh, i mean I, I i i don't know if we can link the the last points you just raised like you being cautious about the kind of um even the jokes the kind of conversations you want to have with the people around yeah. you so that you you are able to identify some of this uh emotional intelligence that, that that's i mean um kind of uh Rock shoulders with your half skills, which has the A to B adaptability. So is yeah. it that the, the leader has a way that he has to be able to be adaptable to the set of people or team he or she is leading? Yeah, so the adaptability here is not only about the team members or the team environment. It's also about the happenings external to the team as well because okay. certain occurrences may have to shape the approach the team uses in right. doing things, or the leader will have to provide a different direction. So if you watch the space, both within and without, you'll be able to adapt your leadership skills to suit the situation or the circumstances. Let me give an example. You set out to achieve, let's say, uh, a productive a production rate of let's say uh, 200 uh, whatever in a month right. and suddenly the there is a blockade of supply chain or supply of your your inputs to the team to produce the target or the, the set target leaders must learn to say okay so under the circumstance what do we need to uh, adjust uh -huh. You cannot be visited and say, no, we said the target is 300 or 200. So at all costs, when the products or the ingredients are not there, what do you do? Then when it comes to within the team, somebody happens to be maybe um, um, uh, not available, if I may, right. or indisposed. And then right. that person is supposed to do something. He's not there. And you keep insisting that no matter what, wherever you are, you have to do that. When others can easily handle do that it. portfolio, how do you adapt? And so all these, you know, bring to the fore your own understanding of the emotions of people and the current occurrences or the situation around them, and you'll be able to adapt to the situation. Yeah. Once you get to know all the emotions and the people around you, you will be able to adapt to the situation all too soon. Our time is up, but it has oh. been a wonderful time. It has been a wonderful time here on the Power Impact Series show. Having here Dr. Victor Abbey, who has taken us through a journey, which, hey, man, if you're just joining us, don't worry. What you need to do is just go back and play the whole video and then get all the wisdom nuggets that has been shared with us on the effective leadership and 
teamwork across diverse generations. It has been a wonderful, it has been a wonderful time. Thank you all for joining us, those that join us. Thank you, thank you. I, I, I can see Dr. Genevieve Pell, who also joined us. And hey, thank you, Doc, Doc, for joining us. <laughs> we are really happy to have you. But I want to take the final words from Dr. Victor Abbey on uh, the topic that has been shared with us. We want to take his final words and conclusion of today's uh, episode before we go. All right, all right. Ambassador Benjamin, it's been, it's been uh, a humbling moment uh, to right. engage you and the audience out there on this very critical topic, leaders, effective leadership and teamwork across diverse generations. We are in the space where we have to coexist with diversity. Diversity is the order of the day. And leaders must appreciate that the older generations have experience to share. The younger generations have some uh, knowledge as in what is pertaining in the circumstance to share and working together in harmony with the different generations will culminate in the attainment of the ultimate goal of development, or if you like, sustainable development. So leaders must, uh, team members must also appreciate that leaders are human as us. Mm -hmm. They need our support to, you know, move us, to motivate us, to inspire us, to empower us to the de destination we all want. So working harmoniously with our leaders, providing con constructive feedback from both ends, is the way to go on this note i want to say also thank you but repeat that in between yesterday's regrets and tomorrow's dream is today's opportunity today is the best opportunity and the only opportunity we have to make a difference in our world let's use today's opportunity to make that difference for tomorrow tomorrow we don't control but we have control today to influence tomorrow. Thank you very much and God bless us all. Thank you very much, Dr. Victor Abi. This has been a wonderful time. And then we thank you for giving us a best eye view of leadership and teamwork across diverse generations. You really broke everything to us. We've seen the kind of generations that are around now and then how a leader will be able to work and then manage this kind of generations at their beck and call and we want to say thank you so much for joining us and yes before we go you know how we do it on each episode we are able to come up with a hashtag that carries us through the whole week before we meet again and then today's episode also has a hashtag so yes are you ready for today's hashtag are you ready for today's hashtag here we go with today's hashtag Mm, mm, mm. our hashtag for today per that is our hashtag for today in the comment session our hashtag for today is this a leader must keep focus <laughs> that is our hashtag for today a leader must keep focus it doesn't matter but you need to keep focus when you work on your emotional intelligence when you know the generation of a team members you're working with when you know what you are going or what you are about to do after it all you need to keep focus because you are moving the team you are moving the team you are moving the team so that's our hashtag for today a leader must keep focus so thank you so much viewers for joining us thank you all that join us thank you all that join and share comments thank you all i mean we will definitely have to have um dr abe again because uh we know the questions are going to come in, but hey, we will just make sure we send the questions all to Dr. Abbey when the questions come in. And I want to say thank you so much to Dr. Abbey again. It was a wonderful time having you here. We love your soft spoken voice and the way it was just entering and then permeating through us with the words and the wisdom you were sharing with us. We are so grateful and want to say on behalf of the team from the African Season Speakers Network, want to say a very big thank you to you for, I mean, gracing our stage with this uh wonderful topic which has been i mean really 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 shared well for us and everyone that joined i'm sure is so happy to have encountered you and to have received from you today so i want to say a very big thank you 
and thank you to our viewers. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Zwanza. As I always say, dreams and levels. Make sure you get to the top level of your dream. So till we meet same time next week on the same channel right here. It's bye bye for now and have a wonderful week. And remember, a leader must keep focused.